Hey everybody, Cruise Man here from Cruise Man's Garage. Today, we're going to install the Muth Blind Spot Monitor System on the Honda Goldwing. First, we're going to route the sensor harness which connects the radar sensors in the trunk to the controller. We need to remove the four 6mm Allen bolts that hold the seat onto the Goldwing. These are located on the passenger grab handle, and you can remove these using a socket and a ratchet. Once these four bolts are removed, you can then remove the handles, and I usually just leave the bolts in, and then set those off to the side. To remove the seat, you need to start at the rear and it's sort of flexible. The base of the seat is flexible so it will bend and you can pull it forward and up enough to clear that backrest. Now you don't want to pull it all the way up because there is an electrical connector for the heated seat as you can see here. With the seat in this position you can now reach in and slide that little protective cover up and you'll be able to access the connector and disconnect that connector as shown. With that disconnected, you can now just carefully lift up and back and the seat will come off and just set it off to the side for now. Okay, before we remove our glove box, we're going to have to remove this flat black trim piece here off the fairing. And because that does kind of hold that, that glove box in place. So we're going to remove this. There's some little tabs along the edge and it's best to start at the bottom. Pry this bottom part out. There's two large tabs, plastic tabs, that hold this in. Okay, I was able to get those two tabs to pull out just using my fingernails, and now I should be able to get the rest of these tabs to come right out. this wire come down on the frame here. We're going to wire, uh, cable tie it to this. And we want to get down, we want to fish it, I'm going to use a coat hanger here, down here where the uh, alternator is. And as you can tell, when we're doing this and videotaping at the same time, it takes a little patience. Okay, there, now you can see the coat hanger has come out the other side. So I'm just going to tape the end, my connector here, to this uh, coat hanger, fish it through, and then we're going to fish it up into the uh, glove box area. Here's our, our wire uh, that we just fished down next to the alternator. So I'm just going to basically uh, run this right up through this uh, uh, body cavity, and we'll get it up underneath the uh, glove box. It's much easier to route the wires to the glove box if we remove this radio panel. Now, there are two 5mm Allen bolts that hold this in place. Go ahead and remove those and set the bolts off to the side. Now, the radio panel is held in place with a couple of clips uh, sort of on the inside of the panel. So you, you push in uh, to release this and then lift up and it will lift up. You don't need to disconnect the panel. You can just kind of pull it out and let it hang off to the side. Now you can see we can get access to the cavity to run our wire up to the glove box. Okay, now I'm gonna uh, fish my wire up here. It's actually, it's actually stiff enough where I think I can do it without using the, uh, the coat hanger. So I'm just gonna kind of 
fish up here, if you get your head over here, you can kind of actually see the wire coming up. So just kind of mess around with it here for a second until I, there it is. There's the little connector. So we're up through here, and then I'm just gonna go right back up here, and now we are underneath the glove box on the left-hand side. So that I can run the wires from underneath the seat into the trunk area for the sensors, I'm drilling a small pilot hole into the front wall of the trunk, and then from underneath the seat, I'm reaming out that hole using a step drill to about 11 sixteenths. Now I can feed the radar sensor connectors through the hole into the trunk and then connect those to the sensors. Remember that the longer of the two wires goes to the left sensor. Before mounting the sensors, it's a good idea to clean the inside wall of your trunk with rubbing alcohol so that it's a clean surface. And then you can just use the double-sided tape. You kind of want to put the sensors, I'd say about two and a half to three inches behind the tail light uh, for proper installation. Now, you also have the option of using something like a Scotch dual lock fastener. That's what I did. That way, if I need to, I can move the sensor back and forth or up and down just to get proper alignment. I also use some of these small cable clamps just to help route the wires and keep them from flopping around in the trunk. There will be some excess wire, so I'm going to store it underneath the little sub-compartment. You know you can pop this open, and you see there is the uh, radio. I'm going to cut a little notch in the back, of, or actually the front, of that little door so that the wires will fit inside that notch, and then I'm just going to stuff the wire down inside. Now here you can see how I've routed the wires. They're still visible, but they're, the excess wire is all down in that sub-compartment. I've mounted the sensors in such a way that I can still fit my helmet inside the trunk. The main harness includes a white connector that goes to the controller and two blue wires that will connect to the rear view mirrors. There's also a power connector on one end. The small connector with an orange and pink wire are not used in this installation. And also there are two longer wires that have small square black connectors at the end. These are not used in this installation as well. You can either cut these off or wrap them up and store them under the seat. Uh, rather than tying into the AC power underneath the glove box, I'm going to see if I can't run this wire down to the battery and connect it to one of my accessory connectors down there. Now the reason is there's still quite a bit of wire here and on a 2012 there's not that much space underneath the glove box. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't fish this wire down uh, just like I brought my other wire up. I'm going to take this one down because this, with the white plug, stays underneath the glove box. That's going to tie into our uh, you know, radar controller. So let me see if I can't get this wire. There it is. Perfect. What I'm going to do now, you can see this is where my, my power plug kind of ended up. <clears throat> and if you wonder what this blue tape is, this is some silicone tape. It's a waterproof, stretchy silicone tape. You can buy it at any hardware store. And all I did was I taped up that little connector that had the pink and the orange wire that I told you earlier we weren't going to use. I just taped it up to here just to make it easier to fish through. And this is kind of where the little power connector uh, ends up, right here next to the alternator. Now I've got my other adapter here, this little extender, which is really designed to connect to the power adapter underneath the glove box. But I'm going to trick it a little bit. I'm actually going to cut off these connectors. I'm just going to use these wires, and I'm going to wire it directly to the accessory terminal. By the way, one thing I forgot to mention is when I plugged this in, I checked to make sure these are labeled ground and accessory. So this is the hot wire, this is the ground. And I can tell from that that the blue wire here is a ground. The yellow wire is the uh, positive. You can just take off this little fuse box cover and up at the top you've got 
accessory terminals that you can simply take your bare wire and wrap it around that and you unscrew it and screw it back down obviously and you just connect to here. To route the wires from the right hand mirror down to the left side glove box, I'm using a series of cable ties that I've uh, strung together. I'm going to use that to fish my wires. Let's start by removing this right side trim piece and then we need to remove the preload adjuster panel. There's two 5 millimeter Allen bolts that hold this in place. You don't need to actually disconnect it. You can just kind of lift it up and set it off to the side. You might need to raise your windshield adjuster uh, on the right side just to get access to lift it out of place. Open and remove the center uh, glove box lid and just set it off to the side. To remove the center section of the shelter, we're going to need to remove these two Phillips head rivets. Just about a half a turn and they pull right out. We'll also need to remove the two center punch rivets that are on each side of the gas filler cap area. There are small tabs at the back of the center section and to release those push out on the fairing as you lift up on the center section. Just to release those two little clips and then pull straight up. You'll hear a pop. That's the two main clips that just let loose. And then there's these three little fingers. You're going to pull this back toward the rear of the bike and just kind of work it loose. And it will, it will pop out like that. Now when you watch the video on installing the Muth mirrors, you'll already know this step. But basically we're going to release these rubber grommets or these rubber boots and we're going to push the mirror housing forward. It will, it's on a hinge and it will press forward a little ways and that will help us to be able to route our wires that go from the mirror housing down into the shelter. Now here I'm on the right side mirror and I'm going to fish using my cable ties. I'm going to fish this wire down into the shelter uh, on the right hand side underneath that panel that we removed earlier. You can see I was able to fish my kind of makeshift uh, wire fishing system. I was able to fish that through this way up here just in front of the gas cap and it now comes out over here in this side of the shelter right here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I'm going to tape my wire to here and fish it up here to the center of the bike and then we're going to do the same thing. Here it is down here. Uh, and then we're going to do the same thing to fish it over to the left side of the bike. Now I'm showing this on a 2012 model. On the earlier model Goldwings, you'll do a similar process. You may have to raise up the center shelter to fish these wires. But this is how it's done on a 2012 to 2017 Goldwing. You know, fishing the wire on the left side of the bike is pretty easy because you just go through the mirror housing and you can literally go straight down. You don't even need to fish it. You just poke the wire down and it'll end up uh, underneath the glove box area. If you look down through that opening, you'll be able to see what you're doing. And then you just reach in and pull the wire out. Okay, so now as far as the glove box is concerned, I've got all my wires where I need them. I've got the wire coming from my left mirror. I've got the wire coming from the right mirror that I fished up through the shelter. And I've got my main plug that we're going to plug into the controller and we're going to splice these blue wires into these mirror wires that I just fished through. And then I have my wire that goes to the sensors in the trunk. Okay, so now I'm ready to hook up my mirror. This is the left-hand side mirror. They both connect the same way, right, right side, left side, both connect the same. You'll notice two wires coming out of the back. This is the one for the blind spot monitor. The black, the one with the black connector is the one for the turn signal. Now, these two connectors, one is male, one is female, so they'll only connect to the correct ones coming out of the bike here, that we, the one that we just ran. Uh, that is the one that goes to the blind spot monitor. Real simple, they only go together one way. Clip them in, get both of these connected, and then when you mount these mirrors, 
you can kind of tuck these connectors and these extra wires. You want to make sure this bottom wire is above where you screw in to the, uh, the mirror housing. So I always kind of set that right there. And then I just kind of pack these wires back here into that little opening. And then we put the two, these two tabs, you can see here, these two tabs go up in these little slots. And then we can push our mounting screw on the bottom, which goes down here, and then we'll put it all back together. So let's see if we can't get these two tabs in place. Okay, they're in. I always have to kind of get down here and look and then kind of push it in, and now everything is set in place. The main controller has three ports on one end. The four-pin port will not be used in this installation. The eight-pin port connects to the sensors in the trunk, and the largest white port in the center connects the mirrors and the power. I'm going to splice into the ground wire that goes into the red power adapter plug underneath the glove box. You can see the red power adapter here. Now I'm using this little red wire splice, but you could also solder this if you want it to be a little more permanent. And you'll see the thick green wire coming out of that. That's going into a three-way cable clamp connector that I'm using. The other two black wires are the ground wires that go up to our mirrors. Now the positive wires that come from the mirrors have the red stripe on them and I'm connecting those to those blue wires that come out of the controller. I'm also using these clamp style connectors and I will put in the description below a link to where you can purchase these clamp style connectors but you could also solder these wires or use any kind of splicing connector you want. Now would be a good time to connect these two harnesses to the back of the controller and test the system. Just walk behind the bike to see if the lights on the blind spot monitor show up in the mirrors. I'm mounting the controller with the ports facing forward in the left hand glove box. Now there's an angled uh, wall right here you can see and that's where I'm going to drill a one inch hole using a hole saw into that angled piece of plastic and then our connectors will be able to fish through that opening and I'm going to use a one inch grommet around those wires to help seal that uh, opening. Well, we're not quite done. You still need to reinstall everything in the order that I'm showing you here. And then go out and take a ride and see if your sensors are working correctly. You can always adjust the angle using these little cable clamps that they're mounted to.